Franklin. Here we go. I'll start now. Now yeah. it's recorded. Um, hey, so my name is Jake Franklin. Um, I'm the wide receivers coach at Legacy Christian Academy down in Frisco, Texas right now. And uh, I played four years of high school quarterback and four years of uh, quarterback in college as well. And uh, so on top of that, there's been a lot of other uh, little opportunities for me to play here and there outside of just high school and uh, college as well. So um, looking back at my experience, I've been able to be trained by the best uh, quarterback coaches in the area. Um, Kyler Murray, he's a quarterback for uh, Arizona, Arizona Cardinals. And then his dad was able to train me for a long time. Uh, Matt Tittle, uh, he was a coach at Texas Tech. I'm sorry, a quarterback at Texas Tech. Now he coaches around the area. Uh, he was able to train me. And then I've been with quarterback country as well, which is a, uh, they just, all they do is quarterback fundamentals and mechanics. And I worked with them for two or three years um, on top of all those other guys as well. So fortunately, I've been able to work with some of the best in the area. I've been fortunate to get to know them. And then they've really been helping me work um, really since I was in seventh grade, eighth grade. So almost a decade of uh, going through quarterback mechanics. And even now, looking back after a decade of doing mechanics, I still have work to do. There's still uh, things that I need to work on and fine tune, as you'll see uh, in the videos whenever I screen share. Um, so this whole entire Zoom, I expect it to last 45, 50 minutes uh, max. And we're just going to be going through all the basics and fundamentals um, of quarterback play from the footwork up to the eyes and where you're looking when you're throwing the football. Um, there's a ton of details. And of course, you're going to have to go um, outside of this clinic to really learn more. But I'm going to teach you everything I know um, in the best and most effective way as I possibly can. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Here we go. All right. Are you all able to see it? See, I can't see y'all. Uh, y'all Sorry, yes, we're good. Okay. Awesome, thanks, guys. Okay, so um, I don't. I don't for, unfortunately, this past season we weren't able to get any of our quarterbacks filmed during practice, only during games. Um, so I had to go way back in my film uh, film collection and find a video from I think it was two years ago of me throwing at one of these quarterback training places. This one's actually up in uh, Minnesota. Um, and so just without even starting the video here, I just want to talk about the stance of a quarterback, um, and just the posture of a quarterback, whenever they're looking for somebody to throw, whenever they're dropping back and they get set, this is how you want to look, uh, right here. Um, and let me also back up real quick and just say every single quarterback is going to do things a little bit differently. If you watch the NFL, any college, you'll see a lot of successful quarterbacks doing different things, whether that be where they step, um, a, a weird throwing motion, like they all switched up. Patrick Mahomes for the Kansas City Chiefs, he has more of a sidearm throw. I uh, watched Drew Brees, who used to play for the New Orleans Saints, um, and he's more traditional. He's quicker. He comes over the top. Uh, he looks much more clean in his throwing mechanics. Uh, but all of them work, but this video is so – um, you're able to have a foundation and a baseline that you can build off of. And so once you understand the basics, you can start to tweak your mechanics and skills um, based on what your personal preferences are. So let's start here again by looking at my posture. Um, we'll start with the feet. So whenever, after you get your drop back, you get away from the pressure and you're sitting in the pocket behind the offensive line, you want to have your feet shoulder width apart with knees slightly bent. Again, you want to be in a nice, comfortable, athletic position so you're ready to throw the ball whenever you need to. Um, so you see my feet, again, shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent, and then we'll go, go up to my hips. If you see my hips, they're pointing on the screen to the right, but in the actual moment from the video, my hips, or my left hip is pointed directly at the target I'm throwing at. So whenever I'm aiming, whenever I'm going through looking through different wide receivers to see who I'm going to throw it to, my hip is following that. So if I'm going through a read left to right, my hips along with my front shoulder is going to turn with every read I have. Um, and we'll, you'll see that later. Going up to 
um, my torso. You'll see that uh, my elbows are near my body, but not, not attached. Whenever you're uh, sitting in the pocket with the football in your hands, you want to make sure that the football is in a, on the shelf. And what the shelf is, is the, uh, is the part of your body right above your chest. So right there, you can see the balls rested really just right above the bottom of my chest. It's a nice, comfortable position and it's ready to fire whenever I, I'm ready to throw that football. Um, also, if you look here at, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a little bit of space between my palm and then the football. Whenever you're holding, holding the football, you want to make sure that you don't grip it too tight. You want to make sure that you have a secure grasp of the ball, but you want to make sure you're not really tightening up, muscling up on the football, just because whenever you go to throw it and you're muscling up the ball, it's going to come out funky. It's not going to come in ac accurate. It's not going to be a spiral. So you want to make sure you have a good grip on the football, but you're not squeezing it. All right. And sometimes even when it rains, you're, you're, uh, you want to squeeze the football because it's getting wet or it's there's slick conditions. However, you just want to make sure you have a nice firm grip, but nothing too over the top because the ball is going to come out weird. Um, and then yes, going back to my elbows, they're next to my body and they're firm, but they're not like tight, just like the grip. They're secure, but they're not um, too over the top. And then they're also not loose. So when I'm dropping back, my elbows aren't just flopping from side to side. Uh, they are, uh, firm and they can move a little bit, but again, it's just a nice middle ground between uh, loose and firm. And that's how my upper body is. Lastly, um, you see my front shoulder right here. That's pointed at my target along with uh, my hips as well. So now we'll go into um, throwing the ball and how the mechanics look whenever uh, you go into the actual throwing motion of throwing the football at the target you're looking at. So we'll just go through once right here and it's already in uh, half speed. So I don't actually throw that slow, thankfully. Um, it's just going in half speed right now. So I can slow down and show you in a more detailed way um, how the ball needs to look whenever it's thrown. So again, we'll go back to starting with the feet. Um, if you look at the bottom, I'm not on the balls of my feet, but I'm also not flat footed. Um, my feet are in the ground, my cleats are in the ground. So I have a firm base. And so I'm ready to push off my back foot uh, towards my target. And so whenever I'm loading up with my feet, like right now, I have about 70% of my weight in my back foot. Eventually that weight is going to transfer forward into my front foot and then the ball is going to follow. But right now, whenever I am uh, throwing the football and I'm about to push off my back foot, I got probably 70, uh, 65, 70% on that back, back foot. Again, that weight's gonna transfer soon. You can also see here that my front foot is going straight at the target. Um, some coaches will tell you, point your front foot two to three inches to the left of your target. Some will say right on. I've always pointed it right at the target. It's worked great for me. Again, that's a very personal preference type deal. Um, but at, in this video, I'm pointing it right at my target. So you can see my toe going right to where I'm throwing it. All right. so. You see all the way to my back foot. Then here, as I take my first step forward to the target, you see all that weight transfer to the front foot. All right, and then that weight comes back to balance once I'm done throwing the football. Um, the speed and velocity of which the football comes out of your hand is gonna be all based on your hips. So right here, even though the weight's transferring uh, from my back foot to my front foot, the thing that is helping uh, that way transfer is me getting my hips around. So you can see that I'm making sure I flip my hips uh, at a pretty good speed. And that helps the weight transfer from the back foot to the front foot. And that's so important to understand because if you don't get your hips into the throw, if you don't torque your hips while you throw the football, then as you're going to be using all arm, um, you're not going to have any velocity. Um, every single throw is going to be all, again, just all your arm. And you're going to lose out on all that power you have and your legs. Again, your legs are gonna be much stronger than your arm is. So make sure that uh, whenever you throw, you're getting your hips through right there. And that back foot's gonna come all the way forward. All right, so that's very, very important. Again, everything starts with the base. Everything starts with your feet. So if you wanna make sure that you're, if you wanna be throwing the football um, with good velocity and accurate, uh, with a tight spiral as well, it all starts 
with making sure you're pointing your front foot at the target and you're getting your hips through, you're moving your hips and then transferring that weight forward. Um, moving higher up the body, you can see that I dip the ball a little bit. And again, this is another preference thing. I do dip the ball down low a little bit. That's about as far as I'd ever tell anybody to dip it. Some guys go straight back. Some guys dip it like I do. Um, but again, the, the main thing that matters is that you have a quick release. Some guys do it differently. Um, the main thing though right now is whenever you see me bring the ball up, I have a 90 degree angle right here uh, with my arm and then the shoulder. You never want this elbow whenever you're coming forward with the ball dipped below your shoulder. In that case, you're coming down low, you're side arming it. And then you're, if you're six foot and then you're throwing the ball from only like a five, nine stature or five, 10 stature. So you want to make sure that you get uh, the ball up. Okay. And that's only going to happen by making sure that your elbow um, is up pair, at least parallel to your shoulder when you're throwing the ball forward. Again, it takes a while to get to that point because you got to dip it, get it cocked back, ready to go forward. But once you're going forward, you want to make sure that that ball uh, is up in the air by having your elbow parallel to uh, your shoulder. And then you're going to follow all the way through with that hand. And you can see my full extension right here. My, my arm fully extends. That's like the whip right there. After my hips come through, my arm follows. And you're going to see that whip motion right there. The arm's going to follow through because of what my hips are doing. And that is how I get velocity on the ball. So it all works together. From the feet up, everything starts down low. Um, and you can see how my arm, again, gets 90 degree at a 90 degree angle. That's so important because everything, uh, if, again, if you bring it too low, you're going to be throwing it low. And then also the ball is not going to snap out of your hand like it will if you come over the top of the throw too. And last thing, this is not a big deal, um, but it has uh, made a big difference in my throwing. My hand, my front hand here, it is, uh, it's staying close to my body. I used to bring it way out wide. Like right now, my hand, like if I showed you videos of high school ball, my hand would be way out here. And I used to start falling off balance because my hand would come so far out wide um, that I'd eventually be falling over to the left and that would change the trajectory of my ball as well. So keeping that hand, that front hand uh, close by my body has helped me big time um, just because it helps control the rest of my um, body. So next clip, it's another similar. Sorry, just a quick question um, yeah. with like, when I when you watch like some like quarterbacks and they're going to throw the ball, how they go and like they they pat the ball first and then yes. make the throw, is that just a personal preference or is that something that like for like if you're throwing the ball like here in this clip like you're not patting the ball is that something you've taught yourself not to do and things like that or is that just something that depends on the person and how they're throwing the ball if that's something that they're comfortable with doing. Um, so that's something that you will see a lot of like high level quarterbacks doing that at times, but that slows down your release again, because whenever you pat the ball, it takes an extra half second to get the ball out. And a lot of times that can be the difference between, um, a sack, you know, you get a sack by a defensive end and then, or getting the ball out to a receiver. So, um, yes, you do see some guys do that everywhere I've been, whether it be a college or high school or one of my private coaches, they have always told me not to do that. And anytime there is somebody there patting the ball, they try to break that habit. Um, and you'll see right here with my, with my left hand, I have my hands wrapped around the ball, which prevents me from patting it because since my hands are already together, I can't uh, just pat the ball automatically. I'd have to come out, hit the ball, and then, then throw it. So I used to have this left hand off the ball, and then pat it, and then throw it. And that's what you'll see a lot of quarterbacks do. But again, fortunately, I had guys around me to help me break that habit. Um, so I'm not patting the ball, and the ball can come out quicker. Um, oh, last thing I'll tell you from this view is uh, we always like to say that there's three cameras on your body, and you want to make sure you take a picture of whoever you're throwing to with all three cameras. You have one camera, the first one on your front shoulder. The second camera is going to be your chest. And then the third camera is your back shoulder. Whenever you're throwing the football, you want to make sure that um, you take a picture of the person you're throwing to with all three cameras. 
and that's going to make and that's going to happen with you getting your hips through. So you can see right here, camera one's pointing at the target as I'm throwing. Camera two right there is taking a picture of the target, and then camera three, I could probably do a little bit better getting my shoulder around, but that's pretty good right there. Camera three takes a picture of the target as well. And what this does is just make sh make sure that you get all the way through your throwing progression. Make sure that you get your hand all the way through and that you're not stopping early. Like if I were to stop my hand right there, the ball would come out. It would float a little bit. It wouldn't come out like a tight spiral. Um, it would just be much slower. And so you can make sure that this doesn't happen by taking pictures of your target with all three uh, cameras. Um, does that does that make sense to y'all when I say three cameras and why it's important? It just helps make sure that you get your hand all the way through and that you throw a tight spiral. Again, let me know if there's any questions here. Um, all right, going forward, here's another view right here, um, a back angle. And there's a few good things, and then there's really one bad thing that stands out to me. And again, we'll walk through that. Let's see here. Okay, so stance. It's good. I have a shoulder width stance, a slight bend in the knees. My cleats are in the turf, but I'm not on my toes. I'm not flat footed. So it's that perfect middle ground. You can see how the ball is about an inch or two off my chest. That's good. You don't want it too far out front or too close in. That will mess up your throwing motion. And it also makes the ball vulnerable to defenders who might be rushing the quarterback. Um, and then you can see how I throw. I step right to my target as well. And again, you can step off to the left a little bit, but you never want to step to the right because then you have to throw across your body. Um, the one thing, though, that I'll warn all quarterbacks is don't wrap the ball. Um, imagine that whenever you throw the football that you have a wall right here uh, behind your back. So the fact that the ball is going behind my head, that can really mess up um, the, the trajectory of my arm and many times it's uh, made me miss high because when I wrap it, I also bend back, like I lean back a little bit and then I end up uh, having all my momentum swing around my body and then I fall over to the left. I don't know if it happens here. Um, slightly, it does. But you can see me slightly fall over to the left. I have a little bit more weight um, on my left foot than I should. I should be standing up pretty straight. But because I wrap the ball right here, I have a lot more force coming across my body and around my body. And then I fall over a little bit. The ball still uh, comes out okay. I've learned to compensate for that just because I have thrown with uh, bad form with this particularly for a long time. And so I learned how to overcome it. But again, if you can stay away from that wrapping motion around your head and keep the ball straight back either behind your head or slightly in front, then that's going to help you tremendously in throwing the football. Um, everything else. Looks good here. You can see my back shoulder end up pointing at him at the very end. So that's taking pictures with all three cameras, uh, making sure my arm gets all the way through. Uh, and you can see my front, you can see my right index finger, the index finger on my throwing hand come all the way across my body and almost go into the pocket on uh, the left side of my shorts. And that's exactly what you want because that is what gets you spin on that football, really flicking it, uh, flicking the football um, with a wrist snap, you're going to have the, la the last finger that's going to come off the ball whenever you're throwing. It's going to be your index finger. You want to make sure you rotate your hand over. Um, and then it's because that's how you get the spiral on the football. Like right there, you see my hand go from, you can see my index finger up top. And the next thing you know, uh, it's on the very bottom. I snapped it all the way to my opposite pocket. And again, that helps get a lot of snap on the football. And again, I'll remind you of this. If you go back to my base, the whole reason I can get my uh, arm to snap down like it does is just because I get my hips through right there. You can see my hips come through with my arm. And that's how I get velocity on the football. Here's one more from this angle. Um, still a little bit of wrap. Again, I don't like that. It's not good. Um, but again, I'm, over, I'm able to uh, compensate for it by just experience with throwing like that. That's how I grew up throwing. And so I was able to make it work. But whenever I did break that habit, um, a few months after this video, I threw a whole lot better and more consistent. Last thing I'll tell you um, also in this video too, is you can see how my back foot ends up coming forward and landing right next to uh, my front foot. And that's what you want as well. 
Um, it doesn't really matter how it gets up there. You just want to make sure that it's not staying back because if you don't bring your um, hips, if you don't bring that right foot through that back foot, um, then that means you're not getting your hips through either, which means you don't have any velocity on the football. Um, again, you see how this all ties together and how everything uh, works together like a machine. It's, it's complex. Like anytime I'm teaching a youth quarterback, it's always, uh, we always have a lot to talk about. It takes more than one session to get through everything. Um, we don't spend a lot of time on this. This is just more of an updated uh, version of how I've been throwing. My release is a little bit quicker um, now than it used to be, but you still see all the same things here. I have a little bit of dip, but I get my hips through even better now. I get my hips through a hair earlier than I used to, a hair uh, faster than I used to as well. And uh, if you're able to watch, follow the ball, um, you'd be able to see that the more I have more zip on it than I used to. Also, before I show a few more clips, um, I don't have any receivers. I just have my wife filming me. So I'm throwing to nobody, but this is for mechanics. So uh, I don't want to have to pull all my buddies out um, just for a 20 or 30 minute video. So you can still see here, stepping forward with my front foot, hips flip around, my weight transfers to my front foot, my arm comes through. I take uh, the picture of my target with all three cameras. Right here, here's a good angle from the front. Uh, again, throwing it over the cameraman's head. So uh, funny situation here, but you can see how uh, I think this is the best view yet. I take a step directly at where I'm throwing. All right. Again, if my foot goes too far left or too far right, then my arm is going to follow that direction. And so I'm going to be missing again to the left or right if I don't step right at my target or just slightly to the left. Um, but again, that's so important. Everything starts low. Uh, you can see me get my hips through. My back hip comes all the way through to be parallel with my left hip. And then my arm follows. And that's where I get the zip from, again, is my hips. And I'll keep emphasizing that because it's so important. All right, there's that. And you see how my front arm, too, stays close to my body. I don't get out wide. And then whenever I'm done throwing, I have more of a uh, vertical presence. I'm not leaning over uh, because my arm didn't get out wide. Let's see if I'm still wrapping here behind my head. I am a little bit. If you see that, if you're looking head on at quarterback and you see that ball pop up behind their head, then you want to remind them, hey, don't wrap the football. Because again, that's going to throw you off balance just a little bit. So if you can keep that football right behind your head, then that's what you want. Um, this is a drill here that I use and I used to run um, to make sure that you don't wrap the football behind your head. And this helps make sure that you have your um, elbow parallel or slightly above your shoulder. So this is a great drill for guys uh, who are dropping their elbow low or they're wrapping the football. I mean, it really does solve a lot of problems. And if you do this uh, 20 to 25 times a day with uh, your teammates, you're going to be a whole lot better of a quarterback because of it. It's very simple, but it's very effective too. So my head is parallel with the goalpost. Um, the ball is directly behind my head. So if you're looking right at me right now, you want to be able to see the ball, which is what you want. And then you see my elbow um, pretty much parallel with my shoulders. I might be able to get it a tiny bit higher, um, but this is good because then it, it allows me to get through over the top, which is what you want you to be throwing over the top. And then I'm able to snap down because of it. Um, also, guys, I'm a six, I was a six foot quarterback. All right. You know, at the big time, uh, big time colleges and the NFL, you see a lot of taller guys. And so you want to make sure that um, whenever you're throwing the football, you don't want to be side arming it because if you're already six foot, then you're throwing it from, you know, a level of five, eight or five, nine. Um, making sure that you come over the top gives you an extra, what was that? Three, four, five inches. So you, you almost gain height whenever you snap the ball over the top. And most of the time, your offensive linemen are going to be a little bit taller than you or bigger than you. And so that's why it's so important to come over the top um, of the football like that. So again, I don't have a target. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, usually, I do have somebody I throw to. Any questions on this drill? Are we good to go? Good to go. Okay, um, going back to footwork, 
again, everything starts with the base. Um, you can see my feet are shoulder width apart. And even as I slide through the cones, uh, my feet stay relatively shoulder width apart. Again, they're going to go out or in a little bit, but you don't want to get too overly extended and uh, you don't want to have your heels clicking because then you're not ready to throw the football and you're not in, a, in an athletic stance either. Um, and so this drill would simulate after you've taken your drop and you set up to throw, um, you moving in the pocket. So right now I'm getting pressure up front. So I got to slide back a little bit. Oh man, All right now that I'm slid back, um, I'm getting pressure from my left side. So I got to slide to the right. Okay. And the whole time I'm making sure that I stay in a really good athletic stance with a good base. So anytime my receiver pops open or that I need to get the ball out, I'm ready to do so. One other thing I want to point out um, with this drill is that every single time I slide to the right or left, you see me sliding with my right foot first. So right here, I take a slide with my right foot. And then whenever I slide up, right foot. And the reason for that is because since I'm a right-hander, um, I want to be ready to throw the football whenever, at any time I need to. So when I step with my right foot, if I see my target open right now, I can push off that right foot. Um, I can, well, let me back up. Once I put my right foot down, which is my back foot, all I've got to do is take my left foot, uh, put it right in front of my right foot, and then take a step forward. And so it gets the ball out much quicker than if I were to take a left step first, then get my right foot back, and then take another step with my left foot. So it just helps you be quicker in the pocket. Um, anytime I slide to the right or left, I'm sliding with my uh, back foot first, which for me is my right foot. It just helps me be able to throw the ball much quicker if I need to, because if I'm stepping with my left first, then I'm out of position. I'm not in an athletic stance and I'm not ready to throw the football. Here, and this is a drill where you slide through all the cones and there's a coach and they'll say hit. And wherever they, whenever they say hit, wherever you are uh, in the cone drill, you set your feet and you throw it. Here's another view um, from the front. Um, you don't need to rush through this drill either whenever you're doing this. And also in a game, you don't need to be spastic. You don't need to be so sudden. You can take your time. Um, you can be uh, smooth with it because if you're going, if you're freaking out and you're going too fast, that's also how you're going to throw the football. So anytime you're getting pressure in the pocket, anytime you got defenders around you, don't panic, just slide nice and smoothly. And 99% of the time, you'll get out of the way and you'll be able to set yourself up for success uh, throwing the football. So um, again, always slide and going back to this because it's so important, slide with your back foot uh, going forward. So right here, right foot, right foot. All right, um, here's another drill I like to do. It's just an over, you go over and back and there, you can, there's a hundred variations of this drill, but what it emphasizes is setting up your feet whenever you're not ready to throw. Because there will be some times when you can't just slide in the pocket like you saw in the last drill and that you're running around, a guy grabs your jersey, and then you're not in a good stance to throw the football. So uh, you need to make sure that you're good at overcoming um, a bad stance and that you can flip your hips and get your feet around in the right way to throw the football accurately. So right here, um, I'm just going over and back, over and back. Uh, not as athletic as I used to be, but I still got a little bit um, over back. Whenever the coach says hit, which again, I'm the only guy here right now, get your feet out front, uh, set up your feet quick, get your hips around, shoulder around, and throw the football. Um, again, this has been awesome for me because there has been a lot of times where my offensive line can't pick up every single person rushing me, and I've got to get my feet set from an uncomfortable position and throw the ball. And this drill has helped me a ton. So you can see here, I'm not in a position to throw the ball right now. But now I got to get ready. I see my target. And so I flip my hips around. I don't rush. See, I take a little gather step right here. I don't rush. Take a gather step. Bam. Plant my right foot. Point my left. Get my hips through. And follow through. And then I complete the pass. All right. So a lot of times, whenever you move and you get out of the way, you'll still have a half second to throw the ball. So again, there's no reason to panic, throw it unbalanced um, for no reason. Most of the time you'll be able to get your feet set. 
Again, never – don't rush. Again, the drills turn into the game. So however you do a drill is how you're going to play in a game as well. And that applies to any sport, applies to life too. How you practice is how you're going to um, end up doing when the bullets start flying. Jake, can I ask you a question about that last drill? Yes. So you're straight on here um, for this drill. Is there a way that you could adapt to it, maybe make diagonal uh, movements as well to really simulate in the pocket if you have to switch and look at an outside receiver? Maybe they're not straight on. Is there a way that you can change up this drill so that you're looking at receivers on either side? Absolutely. And I didn't have the luxury of that during this drill since I was on my own. But a lot of times, um, instead, of, if you know, I only have one receiver, that's the only person I'll throw to. But if I have two or more, you can label them A, B, or C. And so during the drill, instead of saying hit and just throw the ball, you hear C. And then you got to come over the cones, get your uh, hips and shoulder angled at the right receiver, you know, know who the receiver, the right receiver is, and then throw the ball. So you can make this more game like by changing up how you go over the cones and then also by having more receivers too. Was that able to answer your question? Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Um, here's another drill I do, and this ties into this last one. Um, it's just very simple. Um, you can do it on your own or with just one receiver. You walk away, you, you hear hit, and then you don't rush, but you make sure that you can turn around, set your feet, and then throw the football. All right, and you can also do this with more than one receiver. If you have three receivers, you can have, again, A, B, and C, one, two, or three, or you can give them different words or letters to make it more difficult on the quarterback to make the quarterback think a little bit harder. Because in a game, you got to go in and you got to process a lot in a short amount of time, sometimes only one or two seconds. Um, so if you can't do a drill, you're not going to be able to do a game. So uh, sometimes make the drills mentally difficult as well. Um, and again, this drill is just very good for um, getting out of an unathletic stance flipping your hips around, finding your target, making sure that you can make that throw um, even out of an unathletic stance uh, initially. Let's see. All right, here's another slide drill. Um, what this is all about is making sure that you have a good base. Um, let's see here. So you take a three-step drop, four or five-step drop, either one. We'll go into that soon. I got to kind of 740, so got to move through this. Um, this ties into the cone drill. So in the cone drill, uh, you remember that I had a good base the entire time. I was shoulder width apart. I was ready to throw every single time. During this drill, you'll have somebody uh, like your coach telling you which way to slide. He'll say up, back, left, right. And then whichever way he tells you to slide, you slide that direction. And you basically just get very comfortable sliding in the pocket. Because again, you're never really just going to be able to take a drop back and just throw the ball without any uh, problems at all, unless you just have a stud offensive line, which most teams uh, do not. So here you can see me having some tempo to my slides, but at the same time, um, I'm not rushing it. And I'm always sliding up um, with my, let's see, I'm sliding left and right with my back foot. And then also one thing you'll notice here is whenever I slide up, I kind of move the ball forward, forward with me. And the reason for that is a lot of times, if I'm sliding up, it's because there's a defender coming around the back side of me one way or the other, and he's probably swatting at the ball, all right? Their whole job is to uh, make the quarterback's life miserable. So um, whenever I slide up, I got to get the ball away from them, protect it, because they're probably reaching out for it, trying to strip the ball. So I move the ball up with me. Again, that's not always necessary. If you're just sliding up the pocket and there's no one near you, uh, you don't have to do that. But I just do that to create good habits uh, because a lot of times there will be a dude reaching out for the ball. All right. Um, this is not the best example of a drawback, um, but the main things I want to emphasize here is where my eyes are. Um, whenever I'm taking a drawback, which we're about to go through more in depth, uh, I want to make sure that I'm looking downfield. So my eyes, I'm not looking down at my feet. I'm not making sure I'm dropping back in a straight line. My body position takes care of that for me. And the way I'm able to drop back in a straight line without looking down and making sure I'm actually dropping back in a straight line is that my hips and my shoulder are pointing, are pointing straight downfield. You want to make sure that whenever you drop back, 
your front shoulder is not leaning out to the left or right because wherever your shoulder is pointing, if it's pointing this way, you'll most likely be dropping back that way a little bit. Um, at the same time, if my shoulder is closed, so my shoulder is pointing that way, I'm probably dropping back here. And again, sometimes that you do that unconsciously. You don't even realize it's happening until you watch it on film or somebody tells you. Um, another reason that dropping directly back straight is important is because if you're turning your shoulder one way or the other, um, it cuts off parts of the field from your vision. So if I were to have my left shoulder pointed this way, then this side of the field would be very, very difficult to see because I'd close off uh, my shoulder to that side. Um, at the same time, if I open up this way, you're probably thinking, well, then you can still easily look that way and this way. The only thing is, um, if I'm if my shoulder is that way when I'm dropping and I've got to throw it back the other direction, I've got to go that much farther just to get around to throw one way. Um, so it saves you time. It makes you quicker. It also um, doesn't give the defense a chance to key on where you're going to throw the football because a lot of times the uh, defensive backs are going to be watching your body language and your eyes to see where you're throwing the football. So if my shoulders and hips are pointed in one direction, they're most likely shuffling that way too. So you don't want to have to turn your shoulders and hips until you absolutely have to. Here's a quick uh, drop back. This is a video I just threw in there. Um, but again, all dropbacks need to be smooth. They need to be crisp. Uh, they don't have to be hurried. There's no reason to hurry a drawback. Just be smooth with it. The, the whole point of a drawback is, of course, getting uh, depth and distance away from the defensive line. Um, also, on a drawback, before we go in depth, I just want to point out that whenever I do drop back, the football stays still. You don't want to be swinging the ball out front and out back because it just takes one defender to get around. And if the ball is right here, um, they can easily punch through and make you fumble. Um, so that's one thing to think about too, whenever you are in a drop back is making sure that you don't have the ball way out to one side or the other. You want to keep it, uh, on your chest, again, again, above that shelf, um, making sure that you have it secure because I've definitely seen a lot of people fumble because they get the ball way out too wide. So there's two uh, different ways. For your um, drop back. Sorry. Sorry. Just to um, ask a quick question for like your yeah. drop back and with like your first step. When you take that first step, do you um, like over accentuate like the first step to step away from like the D line coming at you or anything? Or do you make it kind of like um, almost like a kind of like base that where you still can throw it off of like taking one step if you see something quick open up that you can make that throw? Absolutely. So are you asking uh, whenever I take, are you talking about this step right here, that first step right there? Yeah, like, like is it is like how your coach um, would you just take a first step that you're taking a wide first step to like back up from the defense or do you take a, a short first step per se to just kind of make like a quick throw if you needed to? Yeah, so I, whenever um, I'm taking a drop that's more than just one step, my first one is going to be big just because the routes that the receivers are running are not going to allow me to throw the ball quick. So they're not running a short route where I can set up and throw it quick. Um, the reason I take a big first step right here and get depth is because I know that they're probably running a route that's five yards or deeper, which means um, I'm not gonna be able to throw it right now anyway, just because um, they're not gonna have their head around looking for me. Right. So that's the whole reason I take a deeper first step on this three-step drop. Yeah, okay, awesome, thank you. You bet. Jake, can I ask a follow-up question to that? Yeah. So I guess, do the fundamentals change at all if you are doing a quick throw? So say you've got a receiver doing a quick slant or a hitch. Um, how does that change the fundamentals? Um, so upper body, nothing changes. Um, upper body is always going to be uh, the same regardless of how quick the ball is coming out. Uh, whenever you're throwing quick game like a – um, like a now screen or very quick, like a one-step slant, anything that's really fast, um, you're not going to be taking a, you're not going to be taking any sort of drop. You're going to have to get your hips and uh, shoulders around quick, and you're just going to have to get the ball out a little bit quicker. So, and you don't get any depth on your drop, 
but that's okay because you're getting the ball out so fast. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't affect anything because that if you throw the ball right away, right whenever you get the snap, the defense doesn't have time to get to you just because it's under a second. Um, was that what so kind of do you have, sorry. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to ask if you had time to set back. So if you're like right-handed, do you have time when the snap comes to actually set with your back foot and then throw, or is it more of a circle with your foot and you just get the ball and kind of step and throw? I'll usually have time to get at least one step in. Um, there are time, like, it really does help if you're under center because you get the ball way faster and you really just have to take one step. But if you're from the gun, like if you're taking the snap from five yards, you do have to be uh, a little bit quicker right when you get the ball. Whenever you're under center, um, you have a little bit more time to throw it just because you already get the ball a little bit quicker. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. A good question. Um, let's see. Okay. So going through drawbacks, there, you know, you can be from under center, just grab it from under uh, the center's butt, or you can be four to five yards back in the gun. Um, right here, I want to be on a walk through quick game, which is like a now you got to throw it right away as soon as you get the ball, um, three step, five step, and then seven step as well. So right now, if I'm throwing the ball to the right um, from under center, and I'm just getting the ball out quick, I'll probably be throwing to like a wide receiver who takes one step up field and then turns around and shows his numbers and is ready for the ball. So if I see that there's a defender and he's 12 yards off the wide receiver and I can get the ball to him right now, and so, so the receiver can get a few yards because he has all that cushion between him and the defender, then this is the type of drop I would take. Um, again, I'm a right-handed quarterback, so I need my right foot to be my uh, throwing my back foot. So you can see right here, so if I'm throwing to the right, I pivot off of my front foot, which is my left foot. I pivot off, I push off my left foot, and that's how I'm able to get depth with my right foot. And then I plant my right foot to uh, at an angle to where I can have my left foot aim directly at my target. And then I just, all the mechanics are the same. I follow straight through, step on my target, get my hips through, my front arm stays close, my elbow gets over the top of my head and everything stays the same. The only thing that changes is just the quickness of my footwork and how the footwork looks. So right here, um, again, pivoting off my left foot, taking only one step back and then I'm getting my front foot right at my uh, target. Here's a three step to the right. Uh, every single time I'm under center, I'm gonna be pressing or pushing off of my left foot. Um, so you can see here, I pivot off my left. I take a big step, um, a big step without it being over the top. I take a depth step, I guess you could call it for my first one. And then it's, oh, well, it's too fast. Depth with my first step. And then it's small, small, one, two and then I'm ready to throw the ball to whichever receiver um, is out there. And so whenever you're throwing, whenever you're taking a three-step drop, uh, you're probably throwing something like a five or six yard hitch. You're throwing a three-step slant where the receiver takes a half second or one second to run a route. So it's not right away. And I have to have a little bit of depth from the defensive line. Um, so every single drop you have is gonna be timed up with the routes that you're running. So the shorter the drop, the shorter the routes that you're throwing probably are. The longer the drop, the longer the routes that you're throwing are going to be. So here, one, two, three. And you see me already turning my body on that third step. And so the reason I do that is because I know like pre-snap, I'll look over to somebody running a hitch and I see the defender that's on that receiver really far off. And so pre-snap, I'm thinking, okay, if everything stays the same after the ball is snapped, I'm going to throw it to that receiver. So after the ball is snapped, I look up, and then now that I see that everything is still the same, the, um, you know, the defender is still far away from the hitch, which is an underneath route, um, I can already go ahead and on that third step, turn my body and throw the football. If for some reason I don't like what I see and I want to go somewhere else with the ball, um, then I won't be turning my body right away. I'll stay, I'll drop directly back without turning my body and I'll slide up and look for my next target. Um, but right now I'm dropping back as if after the snap, I know who I'm throwing to immediately. Here's a five step drop. So with the five step drop, you can expect a route like um, a 10 yard 
curl, you know, like basically a longer hitch, a 10 yard dig, 10 yard out, um, just anything that's intermediate. And it's the same thing as a three step, just an extra two steps. So the first drop step is going to be big, small, big, small, small. And if you go back to the three step, you notice, remember, it's only one big. With the five step drop, it's two bigs. So one big, one big step, one small, two big steps, two small ones. And then again, um, you see me on that last step already pivoting towards the wide receiver because a lot of times by the time I'm on that last step or two in my drop, I already know who I'm throwing to. Um, again, everything happens so quick that a lot of times by the time you get to the back of your drop, you know who you're going to. So um, going back to three step, it's going to be a big step, small, small. Five step is big, small, big, small, small. And then seven, or here's five with a hitch. I'll get to seven in a second. So five with a hitch is the same thing, except you got a little hitch there at the end. I take two. I shouldn't. Um, but say I drop back and I don't just go ahead and pivot on my back foot because the guy I originally thought I was going to throw to isn't open anymore. So I got to buy an extra second. I hitch up. Again, I'm looking at my second target by now. And then I'm able to throw the football. So that hitch, a lot of times, if you are taking a hitch, it's because your first read, your first receiver that you're looking at is not open. So this is what five with a hitch would look like. Same thing. It's going to be big, small, big, small, small. And every single time I say that, of course, I'm talking about my drop. Um, but big, small, big, small, small. My first receiver is not open. Hitch up. Look at my second. He's open. Bam. Let it rip. All right. Seven step hitch. Um, it's going to be big, small, big, small, big, small, small. So you just add an extra big to it. Um, for these routes, it's going to be, uh, you'll be throwing like a post, like a deep post, a go route. I mean, these are uh, plays that a lot of times you'll have to really let it develop. Um, and so you have to buy time in the pocket. You have to get really good depth because it's going to take longer for you to get the ball out. Um, but it's the same thing as all the other ones. You just add an extra big step to it, really. Now, I'm still pivot off of my left foot. Big, small, big, small, big, small, small. Hitch, throw. Typically on the, these long, on these big dropbacks, you're going to take a hitch just because it's going to be a farther to throw. So you have to get a little bit of momentum going forward. Um, and here my drop. I'm See how I'm angled this way? Uh, don't love it. I'm sure at the time of the video, I'm thinking I'm reading that side. Um, but most of the time, if you're, it's a, if it's a full field read and you're reading people on both sides, make sure you keep your shoulder straight. If it really is a true, like half field read, you're only reading half the field. Uh, then you have the freedom to turn your shoulders a little bit, just a little bit, but just know that you turning your shoulders early could alert one of the defenders that you're going that way and they're going to cheat over the top and maybe pick you off. So it's always best to drop directly back. That's one thing I would critique myself on right now. Um, from the gun, if you can do things under center, then everything from the gun is easy. Uh, here, I'm throwing a now screen or like a, a very, very quick route uh, to the left. And all you see me do is take one, st one drop step with my back foot. I anchor it and I fire right away. And all the mechanics are the same. All starts at the feet, goes up to the hips, works all the way through the upper body. Three step drop. Um, you know, I still push off my left foot, but it's not as extreme. I still take one big, two small. One big, two small. Throw it so hard, the ball comes on my hand. Um, that's the only downside of not having receivers. You got to hold on to it unless you want to keep running back and forth. So you see that even with the three-step drop out of gun, um, it's all the same footwork. You still take one big step, two small. And out of gun, when you take a five-step, um, Here's not the three step, just the other direction. Big, small, small, plant, throw. With the five step, it's going to be the same as under center, except you have a few more uh, yards of depth already. It's still going to be big, small, big, small, small. You'll see it here. Push off my left foot, big step, small, big, small, small. Take a hitch, let it loose. Um, and then I'll hustle through this one. Uh, whenever you're throwing on the run, you if I'm a right-hander, you want to make sure that you're coming downhill at your target and you throw off um, of your right foot. Again, that's because I'm right-handed. If I were left-handed, I throw off my left foot. So right here, I'm simulating. I take a drop back. I'm getting pressure. I move up. 
I get pressure from inside, I roll out, and then I come back downhill, I run at my target, um, and then I hit them on the run. So just make sure that you're always running at where your target's gonna be. Don't be running off to the side um, again um, because the ball's gonna come out weird. You wanna make sure you're running directly at where your target's gonna be, exactly where you're, at, where you're gonna throw. Same thing here. Again, I'm not wearing cleats. Uh, that doesn't make up for my slow speed here. Um, but I turn out if I'm going the opposite direction. I speed turn, pivot. I come back downhill. Upper body stays the same. Throw with my right foot. Um, let's see here. Hey, are we good on time? Do we have like five more minutes? Anthony? Yeah, yeah, you're good for You're good for time. Okay, perfect. Um, I know it's already nine o'clock there. Um, but real quick, I just want to show you a uh, game, a game situation and uh, how it looks. So here I want to show you a, a, a throw on the run. And again, we just touched on that a little bit and I'll kind of move through these pretty quick, but I take a draw back. All right. I get pressure. I feel pressure coming from the middle and from the outside. So I want to roll out to my right because that's where all the grass is. And initially I'm running par uh, parallel with uh, the yard lines here but I see where my target is. I see where I want to throw and I tra change my trajectory. Last second, you can see it right there. I come downhill right at where I'm going and the ball is able to come out exactly where I need it to go. And the biggest thing here is everything, upper body stays the same. Yes, my feet um, are out of whack. I would like to set and throw. I didn't have time to, I'd have got it right on me. So sometimes you got to fight. You got to push off your right foot when you're on the run, but upper body stays the same. I turn my um, shoulders the best I can. And then I follow through, ball ends up in the right place. And again, that just comes with time and reps, being able to throw on the run. Um, here's a good example of having my feet set. I am atrociously late on this throw here. Um, again, the ball should be out now. I don't know. I think I'm looking at the backside and I work across. Uh, but one thing I want you to notice is the whole time I'm back in the pocket, I have a good base. See, the whole entire time, my feet are shoulder width apart. I take a three-step drop. Now I'm set. So at any time I'm ready to throw the football just because I have a good base. Whenever I do finally see my receiver on the backside, I guess he was my last read, I can get the ball out quick. Um, again, don't love the form outside of that, but I did have a good base. If my feet were too close together or too wide, I wouldn't be ready to throw the football um, right there. Um, right here, we're uh, I think it's a three-step slant up top, good route by the receiver, bad throw by me, but you can see right here my foot is pointed to where he's at and not where he's going to be so whenever i'm throwing the ball i need to make sure that i'm throwing it where he's going to be at or else the ball ends up way behind him this probably should have been picked off but you can see how he has to go back um, and reach for it just because my feet weren't set the right direction if i put my foot further in front of him probably five six yards in front of him that's a completed pass He's able to go score here somehow and make me look good, but that wasn't a good throw. That was because of my feet. Um, all right, here's a bad rep. And this is why you get your feet set and uh, why you want your momentum going towards your target and not drifting to, to the left or right. You can see here, I have time to set up my feet. I should not be throwing like I did, um, but I throw falling away from the target. I don't get my... Uh, Feet set, look, my back foot, I'm throwing off my left, so I'm not set. I watch where the ball goes. It sails way over the guy. It's probably third down. Now we got to punt it. It's a mess. And if I were to do the right things, if I were to set my feet, plant my right foot and drive through the target with my hips and shoulders, then it would be a complete pass. He's open enough to hit him. I have enough room to set my feet. This one is all on me. I should have made that throw again. That's why it's so important to, uh, oh, and also, Look how bad I'm wrapping the ball. That does not help anything. So that's why it's so important to do the little things right and do the fundamentals right. Because in a big game situation, whenever you need it the most, if it goes out the window, you're in trouble. Um, here's one more. Again, I thought it would be pretty bad if I didn't add it to the back clips. I did not want this just to be a highlight reel. Um, there's no reason for me to be throwing off balance here like i should i have room there's not a defensive line within five yards of me i'm safe as can be um, on a football field and i fall off balance you can see my whole body leaning left and then my right foot the one that's supposed to come only parallel with my front foot it swings all the way around and i end up falling off to the left and i totally sail the ball over that receiver 
and he gets hit blindsided without a ball. So again, that was totally on me. Um, and that's if I were to set my feet right here, plant my foot, throw it. If I stepped right at him, that would have been completion. But if you watch my front foot here, my left foot right here, watch where I step way off to the left and I fall over that direction too. So again, getting your feet set and having a good base. Can't stress it enough. It's so important. And then last clip, we'll end on a good note. Um, I take three step drop. I have a good base here. You can see I take one hitch up because there's a dude coming around the back. I plant my back foot right there. I take a step to where I'm throwing it. My fundamentals are good. I got my left arm in tight. My hips are coming around. My elbow is above my shoulder and the ball comes out over the top. Again, that's everything we've been talking about. That's what you want and good things happen uh, whenever you throw it the right form. It's amazing uh, how uh, things work out when you do what's right. So that's all I have, guys. Um, I know we went a little bit over, but thanks so much for, for um, your time. And thanks for being a part of this. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, joining us and everything and doing this. Um, I really appreciate it because this is like our first uh, clinic and everything, and it was awesome. And I'm really thankful for all of you guys for hopping on and everything. It was great. Um, so hopefully we can have everybody on uh, for more calls in like the future, and I'll definitely let you guys know and reach out. So Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and again, thanks for having me on. And then, yeah, I was going to say, if y'all yeah. have any more questions, uh, let me know. I'd be happy to answer them.